What's more fun than listening to us in your car or at work every Wednesday or Friday? Seeing us perform an episode of Sinisterhood for you live. We're currently on tour, and the first three legs of shows were such a blast. Next, we're headed to Chicago for two different shows with two different topics, and then Milwaukee. And then we're going to round off the tour in sunny Florida with shows in Tampa and Orlando. At every stop, we choose a local topic and perform an episode of Sinisterhood for you live. We even throw in a fun bonus segment at the end where we get to hear from you in the audience. Tickets for shows are available now. For all the details, including dates, times, venues, and more, visit Sinisterhood.com slash live shows. That's Sinisterhood.com slash live shows. See you on the road. Life is so much easier with a great sense of humor, and no one ever said it had to be rated PG. Sometimes it feels good to let out our inner smartass and drop a few F-bombs. Smartass and Sass is a subscription box mitt for unashamed mouthy mofos. Get your fix of brazen humor each month. Smartass and Sass items are curated and personally tested by the SNS team, who want you to get a good laugh in your day. SNS partners with some of the best small businesses to bring you trendy and snarky items each month. SNS stuff, I realize I just have it around my house and use it all the time. Like a, I had a cozy from a few months ago that says, my soul's too lit to give a shit. Mm. And I realize I drink my fizzy water out of that like almost every Amen, day in the coasters. And, I realize yeah. how much of the stuff we have with us when we go on tour. Yes. You've got yeah. several bags. I mm-hmm. realize that I've now switched over to the um, makeup brush kit that says, love that. yes, it's so cute and it has all the little makeup brushes and they each have different funny little sayings engraved on the handle it comes in very handy when traveling my bag is full of smart ass and sass and i i get comments on it even from the tsa who liked the you should see my active bitchy face <laughs> bag each box contains one smart ass and sass designed t-shirt and has between seven and nine unique items other subscription sizes available subscribe at smartassandsass.com use code creepy for 15 percent off new subscription and shop orders Follow Smart Ass and Sass on social media for your daily dose of attitude. A resident of this central California town captured footage of an unidentified creature scurrying across his lawn. He offered the tape to experts and the media who couldn't determine what this strange monster was. Soon, more sightings were reported across California and beyond. This odd-shaped, scampering being didn't do anyone any harm and was soon embraced as an online phenomenon. This week's episode is The Fresno Nightcrawler. Fills with dread, probably a murderer who wants you dead. It could be a ghost, a demon, or worse. Perhaps you're the victim of a witch's curse. It's hopeless, you're doomed. You'd call a priest if you could. You'd rather just listen to who? Sinister who? This episode was voted upon by our Getting Into It Here patrons. They had three cryptids from which to choose, and this one won out. And it was one I was not very familiar with, so it's always fun to research those. So thank you, everyone who voted and who supports the show and are getting into it here. We appreciate that. It always It's a fun, I mean, we, we kind of narrow down the options a little mm-hmm. bit, but it really is totally up in the air of what they'll choose, and uh, they chose this. And also, uh, we got to meet a tiny Fresno we nightcrawler. Did. Kirsten, one of our listeners slash friend of the pod, was at the Boston show, and uh, it was so cute and little. We it got was, to sign him. We did. We got to sign him. So we are forever marked on the nightcrawler. I, um, this is a weird looking one to me. Uh, it's not your typical cryptid where it kind of looks like something else that already exists. This is kind of its own thing. And I'm just going to say it. It kind of looks like a sperm with two tails. Oh, that's a really good one. People say pants, but when you put the little tail of the feet Mm -hmm. slash shoes that you see in a lot of drawings, it absolutely is like a double, maybe it's like a sperm that's just looking for a big old egg. (laughs) It's a double sperm. That's what's running. It split on itself. It got so excited to find an egg that it uh, separated itself. Uh, yeah, it does look like pants. And pants is one of my top three favorite words. So I love that uh, this, it could be, a, maybe, is it a person in pants? Or it's from another planet, Pansonia or something, Pansonia? where everyone's shaped like pants planet and it's pants. a magical place. You know what? Uh, I want to 
live at uh, Shorts Planet right now, though. It's too hot to wear. I tried to wear pants yesterday. It was a grave mistake. I was dripping sweat going to the movies by the time we got into the theater. It doesn't matter if you're just going from your car to the inside. I just choose not to leave. My car has been malfunctioning. I don't know. It's like a dead battery or something. I just like don't have a car right now. And that's okay. Because where are you going to go? It's too hot. I just tell Paris, bring me stuff when you're out and about because I don't want to go. That's what I do. Tommy's like, I'm running to the store. I'm like, oh, could you also run by Subway and bring me a sandwich on your way back? (laughs) It is so effing hot here right now. So if you live in our area... Thoughts and prayers. If you don't, don't come here right now. It's I too was hot. S- so sad. We visited after the Philadelphia show. We visited Paris's grandmother in New Jersey, and she lives kind of in this wooded area in South Jersey. And it was like sixty-five degrees oh, and nice. sunny. And I was just like, "We are moving in with you. Mm, it's we it's, live here now. Now it's uh, over a hundred today." Yeah, it's hateful. This this forecast is hateful. It is. It's real. It's it. rude. Yeah, we don't love it. But we do love this little guy. And uh, California's got pretty much year-round good weather. So if I was a cryptid, I would go to a place like California to hang out. Yeah, Fresno looks like a great place to hang out. I read also a, I don't know, after our psychic experience in Salem, God, we now psychic know. Psychic is in quotes. <laughs> that the uh, your results may vary. I've read a blog by a psychic in Fresno who said this place is a beam of energy mm. is is bearing down upon Fresno and that's why we have constant the word was constant UFO sightings oh. and things like the night crawler. So according to this singular psychic's blog, that it is a it's a beautiful wonderful place to live if you are I uh, want to farm some things and or uh, if you want to see some UFOs, I guess, and or a night crawler. It's uh, got something for everyone, which I think is their city motto. So <laughs> go visit and find yourself a night crawler and you'll be the first because no one's had an in-person encounter with one yet. Only footage. Only, they're, they're they're only some elusive. video footage. So, yeah, we'll talk all about that. Well, I'm Christy. I'm Heather. And let's get into it. Located in the heart of the Golden State between Los Angeles and Sacramento sits the normally quiet town of Fresno, California. Considered a major city in California's San Joaquin Valley, Fresno is home to some of the nation's best farmland, with about 1.88 million productive acres. But in 2007, the city played host to a creature that had people well outside the city limits talking and speculating. The first film sighting of the creature stalking the streets of Fresno was captured on November 5, 2007. A man identified in news reports only as Jose had set up a video camera over his garage. His dogs had been barking more often than usual. Neighbors had also reported bicycles being stolen. Out of curiosity, Jose wanted to see whether it was a wild animal or a creeping bicycle thief who had been setting the dogs off. And in 2007, we don't have ring doorbells or right. w- um, much more accessible, easier to buy, you know, simply save video systems where you can just kind of stick the cams up everywhere. So this was like, I'm going to go put a f- camera. We're going to hook it up outside. He had one on course- his front, run on his back, and <laughs> was like, we're going to catch this thing one way or the other. But yeah, it was not the more advanced systems we now have where you can check your cameras on an app on your phone and see what's going on no matter where you are, which you do I quite do. regularly. <laughs> it's one of my favorite things. I'm like, oh, look, Paris is playing video games. Or like, oh, look, he's making dinner <laughs> when we're apart. It's like a monitor. It's a <laughs> a baby monitor. monitor. <laughs> uh, I do like now my cameras say animal detected or human detected. Because before oh. I would get like just motion alerts and I was like, someone's broken into the house. And now it's like, it's the goose uh, yet again. Yet again, it's the goose. Well, then you need... Cryptid detected. cryptid detected. They need a third option. And I can, and I have, it does like in the cloud. This was a VHS tape, man. How far we've come in oh, just such man. a, such a short time. We have, haven't we? What Jose captured was neither of those things. The footage showed just after midnight, a non-human looking figure, white with two long legs, that most closely resembled a pair of pants, walking without anyone wearing them. Then another one appeared, even clearer than the first. The creatures appeared to be two to three feet tall, with long legs, no arms, and small black eyes. According to Jose, they both looked like a pair of white pajama pants walking through his yard. 
And they're actually kind of shambling. They're kind of like back and forth walking. They, to me, it's when someone is um, trying to learn how to walk in high heels. Mm. This is, you know, you're kind of like awkward. You're stepping kind of weird. Your gait's kind of off. Or like a a newborn baby deer animal learning to walk for the first time. Just kind of awkward. Doesn't look quite right. Shaky, yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah, but he, uh, he, when he saw this, he ran and got his brother and had his brother look. And then both of them were like, what is going on? And quickly then showed the footage to their family. The system Jose used would record over the footage if he rewound the tape a second time. To preserve what he saw, Jose took out his video camera and filmed the television screen showing the creature walking by. This caused a degradation of the footage, but allowed Jose to show his family what the cameras had captured in their backyard. Paranormal investigator Victor Camacho later got involved with the family. Camacho explained in a speech on the subject that, Jose's brother went outside that night. He didn't see anything, but on one part of their yard had tiles, and he saw footprints, small footprints. When police later arrived after being called by Jose, they discovered the small footprints had been washed away due to rain. Oh, the night crawlers picked a rainy night. <laughs> Maybe that's what brings them out. They they like the cool, uh, r- the way the rain feels on their pants. Maybe that's how they keep their pants so white. <laughs> they only go out when it's uh, raining so they can wash away all the dirt. They're like, we rub OxyClean on ourselves. When the <laughs> rain hits it, it activates. We're always stain free. I do also love to imagine the 911 call. Of- yes, we need that released. Um, <laughs> it's, I... I imagine 99% of the time it is horrific to be a 911 operator. Mm -hmm. But then you get a call like this and it makes the rest of the day not seem so terrible. Or like there's a TikTok that posts like kind of wholesome 911 calls and one of them where that little boy's like, I need help with my math. Yeah, and and they do help. Yes, they're so sweet. Also, the one that I'm sure everyone's heard, if you haven't, go to YouTube immediately, where... The cop calls in because he and his wife did some edibles and he thinks he's dying. Have you not heard this one? I don't think I've oh heard my that God. one. <laughs> it's amazing. He's like, <laughs> I think we're dead. I think we're dying. And he's so high and so out of his mind. And the operator's just like, sir, you're not. You're fine. <laughs> it is. Uh, it's embarrassing. And if memory serves, I believe he was a cop, which made it even uh, worse for him. Because this was, was like, years ago. We have to call it in. I heard one, and I I don't know if it's real or not. I hope it's real, where a woman calls, and she's like, my teenagers are fighting, and they're oh, yelling yeah. at each other. And he's like, would you want us to come shoot him? Which is very, it's like very dry humor, sarcasm. Mm-hmm. And she's like, what did you just say? I don't know if that's real or not. I've but. heard that one. I think it's not. I think it's been debunked, mm. but, uh, you know, who knows for sure. But in this one, I mean, to be fair, according to... Uh, Jose is family and Victor Camacho. He was terrified. Mm-hmm. I think he didn't call and go. There's a cryptid in my yard. He was like, I don't know what the fuck this is. I don't. It's leaving tiny footprints everywhere. Please send help. <laughs> it's setting my dogs off. Police and experts were stumped. It didn't appear to be a person, nor was it an identifiable animal. Without either of these possibilities, more outlandish theories emerged. Some theorized it could be an alien. The creatures seemed too small and moved too awkwardly to be a human. If they were aliens, however, what did they want? Aside from the barking dogs and footprints, the being, who was later deemed a nightcrawler, wasn't bothering anyone. It was simply piquing the public's curiosity. That's the thing about these never try to break in. Nobody says, I woke up and there was one hovering over my bed. They're always just like, do, 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 just walking. They're at nighttime. They're just making their way. They're just doing their thing. I saw a nightcrawler. Uh, I think it was a tote bag, and it was a nightcrawler walking, and it said, make him a way downtown, which <laughs> I liked a lot. Yeah, there's a lot of merch out there for the nightcrawler. The footage was analyzed by experts and even published on Univision's interesting and curious segment of its evening news program. The sci-fi TV show Fact or Faked also took a look at the footage and tried determining the nightcrawler's origin. Investigators on the show contacted Fresno Animal Control, who confirmed it was no known animal that they had ever encountered before. In the end, neither Victor Camacho nor Fact or Faked were able to conclusively prove or disprove if the footage was faked. In the weeks following the sighting, 
Jose was so scared of what he had witnessed that he refused to leave his house. He and his family chose to remain anonymous, not only to avoid the spotlight, but also out of concern they would appear unhinged, according to Ranker. Sadly, any further attempts at clarity from Jose would be impossible. He died in a car accident several years ago and did not speak to the media any further after the initial incident. And that's what I think is fascinating about this first sighting is that it's not like you have with Amityville or something and Ed and Lorraine come in and they want to make it into a movie and option it into a book. I think he wanted the footage out because he wanted to know what it was. And even in the on-camera interview with Univision, he doesn't, his face isn't shown. It's like his hands and his camera. Mm -hmm. It's like keeping him anonymous. He didn't give anyone his last name. And so it's not like they said, okay, well, we're going to, you know, start charging tickets to the front yard and come see where the Nightcrawler was. It was very much like, can you just help us and find out what this is? And and sadly, they they didn't figure out what it was. Mm -hmm. Sinister Hood will be right back. They say that hair care is the new skin care, but there's one brand that's taken it to the next level. With a cult-like following, Kitsch has created game-changing essentials beauty enthusiasts swear by. Started in 2010 by selling hair ties door-to-door, literally just hustle in a dream. Kitsch is self-funded, female-founded, and now carried in over 20,000 retail locations. Kitsch's best sellers include satin pillowcases, caps, and eye masks, and the satin is vegan and cruelty-free, not the silk, which was made from silkworms. These are so great, so soft, and so nice for your hair and skin while you sleep. I was recently Googling, as I often do, how to help my flyaways, and one of the first things that came up was use satin pillowcases. So when we got these, I was very thrilled because I'm now sleeping on a satin pillowcase. I'm doing everything I can to tame these flyaways. Kitsch is also known for their heatless satin curling rollers. Say bye-bye to heat damage. There are TikTok videos of people throwing away their $600 curlers for this. They also have quick dry hair towels. They work like a dream. You seriously don't even know until you try. And, Heather, you said that the hair clip was the best hair clip you ever used. Absolutely. It's like this metal hair clip and it, I have my hairs down almost to my waist. It's so long now and my, it holds all my hair in a clip that looks like it shouldn't. And also in July of 2021, so well before we ever had Kitsch as a sponsor, I bought their uh, microfiber hair scrunchie to help uh, dry my hair because I like to air dry it because it takes, I don't know, for 45 minutes to dry my hair. Mm-hmm. And so I started using that well before I, you know, like I said, before we even decided to, uh, you know, use Kitsch as a sponsor on the show. And I've also used the satin curling roller and it gave me very cool beachy waves mm-hmm. that even worked with my super long hair. Nice. Kitsch is offering you 30% off your entire order at mykitsch.com slash sinister. That's right. 30% off anything and everything at mykitsch, spelled M-Y-K-I-T-S-C-H dot com slash sinister. One more time, mykitsch.com slash sinister for 30% off your order. No one knows what you're looking for in a doctor better than you, and no one is better at giving you the tools to find the perfect doctor than ZocDoc. The people who created ZocDoc found the major pain points in healthcare, all the things that weren't working, and said, enough. And they made booking a great doctor surprisingly pain-free. I use ZocDoc, and you should too. I found my primary care doctor on there. We found Paris's primary care doctor, who happened to be in the same practice, but a different doctor. We all have different needs and Mm -hmm. wants. And you've used ZocDoc I have, yes. There's no bigger beating than going through the pains of trying to find a doctor or a specialist that takes your insurance and that whole rigmarole, and ZocDoc makes it so much easier. ZocDoc is a free app that shows you doctors who are patient-reviewed, take your insurance, and are available when you need them. So when you walk into that office, you're set up to see someone in your network who gets you. Go to ZocDoc.com, choose a time slot, and whether you want to see the doctor in person or do a video visit. And just like that, you're booked. Every month, millions of people use ZocDoc, and I'm one of them. It's my go-to whenever I need to find and book a doctor. In the chaotic world of healthcare, let ZocDoc be your trusted guide to find a quality doctor in a way that is surprisingly pain-free. With ZocDoc, you can get your docs in a row. Go to ZocDoc.com slash creepy and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then start your search for a top-rated doctor today. Many are available within 24 hours. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash creepy. ZocDoc.com slash creepy. The 2007 sighting wasn't the only time the pants-shaped creature was seen in Central California. In 2014, a man only identified as a 60-year-old former Marine was driving with his wife near Carmel. 
It was December 12, 2014, when the pair saw an unidentifiable creature. Ron McGlone, an investigator with MUFON, told the Highland County Press, The witness was driving near Carmel on December 12, 2014, came up over a hill and saw a seven-foot-tall, slim, gray creature with muscular legs that walked like its knees were backwards. Well, I don't like any of that. No, I love Carmel is very beautiful. Carmel's great, beautiful. There. Yeah, we drove through there in the fall. And uh, man, you look over that wonderful horizon and see a fucking seven foot tall backward <laughs> no. ass leg thing it's driving the, to the ocean. It's the knees backwards for me. I don't Hate like it. that. Evokes just um, uh, exorcism type things, you know. Or if if y'all are watching Stranger Things right now, y'all know what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's 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 unnatural. It doesn't make me feel good. Yeah, when you see something with backwards knees or arms going, you're like, that, shit, that ain't right. Mm-mm. Like, what? And your brain's like, it should be. Is it an ostrich? You know, you're trying to like, <laughs> is but it a it, ostriches aren't slim and gray. Yeah, unless it's something went horribly wrong. The witness's wife was quoted saying the appearance may be related to some unusual gardening activity they noticed in their front yard. The woman told the paper, We recently bought a place in the Fort Hill area in southeast Highland County. We first noticed after about 30 days of living here that we suddenly have a perfect circle that stays fresh green no matter what weather in our front yard. On Friday night, the 12th, we were driving home and after turning on Carmel Road, which leads to our road, we ran around the curve by the Carmel Church and then up a small incline and approximately 10 feet over the incline and in front of our truck, the alien ran across the road and into the woods. I would love a patch of green that stays green all year round because it is uh, impossible to keep anything alive right now out here. My front yard's like a dirt patch. So mm-hmm. if it could just, even if it just walked a circle around the, the uh, tree in my front yard, it would be better than the mudslide we got going on right now. Yeah. So I'm down with that. If, if its legs are backwards, that's okay too. It's like a garden gnome, but not and creepier. But if it's going to keep my yard green, I'll keep it around. That's fine. Yeah, we can sure. have a symbiotic relationship. Yeah, whatever it needs to do and whatever it's getting by doing that, mm-hmm. keep doing it. It's fine with me. That's fine. I'll put a little bowl of water out <laughs> Like the neighborhood cat. She recalled their reaction to seeing the beast, saying, My husband saw it. He's a skeptic, almost 60 years old and a proud Marine. He wouldn't have admitted to seeing it if he hadn't been in shock. I had him draw it for me when we got to the house. He says it was asphalt gray. Our asphalt is gray. And about seven feet tall. No arms that he could see, but muscular in the legs area. No jawline, and its legs were bent backwards, and it leaned forward as it ran. I'll tell you what this is. Uh Uh-oh. Robots. Oh, yeah. What are those called? We recently had this conversation. Devil monsters from hell. (laughs) I saw a robot. I almost sent you the link, and I thought, this will probably be very upsetting for Christy. It is a robot that plays basketball. No. That shouldn't happen. Full-size Human robot. It can free throw. It was hitting threes. Of course. Like Luca. It's not programmed it was... to lose. Never. <laughs> they don't lose. No, never do they lose. <laughs> I was like, if this thing could dunk, we are hosed. Yeah. It was free throws and three pointers and just zzz, all over going the around place. the court. Did it, it did it um walk or did it glide? It rolled around. Okay. It had rollers. Yes. Like but Wally? I have seen they have off-road, they have the all-terrain robots, and their legs look like this. Their legs yeah. go backwards. Maybe they're like government drone oh. testing. Where were we when we were recently talking about the dog robots and um, there we're was another somewhere. thing. We were talking about how creepy and scary they look. Yeah, and how now the robots, you can't push them over. I can't remember why we got on that subject, but it was while we were driving, I think while we were driving from Boston to New York. Mm. It was on that stretch. And talking about, I'm gonna try, maybe because Boston Dynamic is the company that makes some of these oh. robots. You push them over and they just stand right back up. Yeah, like one of those, uh, what are those things you can punch and they just go down, but then they come right back up? Those the, inflatable the clown things? clown ones? Huh? The ones that look like clowns? Yes. <laughs> See? Clowns and robots. Two things, you hit them, they get right back up. They're undefeatable. The reports were made to bring attention to the situation. McGlone told the Highland Press, I would like to get this information out in your area in hopes that maybe someone else has seen it, or that their giant crossbred ostrich got loose or something. UFO hunters online began calling this the Carmel Area Creature. 
though some believe it is related to the Fresno Nightcrawler. Like, if you work for MUFON, you got a sense of humor? <laughs> you know, I feel like you're <laughs> one or one of two things. You're either very serious and aliens are not a joke, or you have a good sense of humor and you can make light of certain situations. I think McGlone is the latter, and he's like, if someone shaved their ostrich and set it loose, <laughs> let us know. Ostriches can be mean, though, so oh, you uh, you might want to <laughs> take caution if you do run across one of those. I'd rather see a cryptid than a, than a bald ostrich, because honestly, well, I don't know. Maybe if the ostrich was docile enough to let it be shaved, it would... It's, it's less, okay. Uh, yeah, man. Ostriches, though, they will get you. Yeah, at yeah. a petting zoo, no. don't get near that. It's a dinosaur. I told you when I went through a petting zoo, a drive-through one, when I was a kid with my grandparents, and they give you the bags of feed, which is so stupid. When you, what is wrong with us that we think it's okay to send just anybody in their car through the wilderness with a bunch of wild animals, and you're just handing them food with your hands. Giraffes, ostriches. In? Did the ostrich get you? Yeah, it got its head because I gave it a, a treat, and then it, it was hungry it wanted more, and so its head came in, and the treat bag was in my lap, and it started going after it, and my grandmother <laughs> flipped out and started rolling the window up on its head <laughs> to get it out of there. Jesus, Man, I know. Yeah, the, I was also attacked a- by geese once with my grandparents. I had a lot of. Bird encounters when when I was with my grandparents, but yeah, those things they don't take no for an answer. When they want something, they go after it. I like that your grandma's just like I'm. You know what? I'm sticking my hand back there. I'm doing it. We're turning, rolling up the window. She's got to protect me. That's yeah. Gra- Granny's got to protect me. True, true protection. Yeah, those ostriches. I feel like of all the animals, just climb in the driver's seat mm-hmm. and just go. Like they just would just over. drag you out and jump in and be like, I'm getting out of here. Mm-hmm. They don't care. Those mm-hmm. heads. I mean, they need a sunroof so that they could see out. But <laughs> they do. Yeah. <laughs> or a convertible. Oh, yeah, yeah, just get them oh. a little a little convertible. That'd be cute. Cruising down the street, got mm-hmm. the bag of if you, they had the bag of feed in the seat next mm-hmm. to them, they just dip their it's head like down and get it right. on the road. <laughs> in March of 2011, creatures very similar to the one in Fresno were captured on security footage in Yosemite National Park. Park rangers had set up cameras to try and catch suspected vandals. What their footage revealed was something much more bizarre. Much like the Fresno video, the Yosemite creatures appeared in a pair of two. They were around four feet tall, bipedal, and had no visible arms. Like the previous duo captured on film, the heads of these creatures were quite small compared to the rest of their body. While they appeared to walk much slower than the ones in Fresno, the shape and gait were both similar. I like that it's a buddy system with the Nightcrawlers. There's always two. You gotta... One... What fun is shenanigans if you're by yourself? If you're going to go out and, you know, get up to stuff, you want to have a friend with you. Yeah, if you're going to visit a foreign planet, you're like, come on, let's go. Let's, let's go, go. adventure. Yeah, if something happens, you need a witness. So you're not just going back to the ship and you're like, y'all aren't going to believe these people have dogs as pets. <laughs> Which I think quite often to myself, sometimes when I'm just sitting in the house and I have a pig and a dog, I'm like... Wow, we're all just living in this under the same roof together. <laughs> so as I told you, coming to your house, I'm like, oh, she has a pig. Like, I know that. And then you go into a living room and you see a giant pig in the living room. You go, wow. <laughs> yeah. There's a pig in this living yeah, room. There is. Damn. Like, I know. I know it's coming. <laughs> I've seen her. She's great. She's very friendly sometimes. Sometimes. you have food and <laughs> snacks. But it's still like a, just a strange, you know. You it's, know, it's uh, not. it's not normal. It's not, not it's everybody great, has one. Like, seeing a dog, okay, that's common. The pig, not as much. Yeah, but she's uh, she's part of the family. She so. is, and she's inside a lot right now because it is way too hot for her to be outside. Too hot for the piggy. Well, the night crawlers can go back and tell their ship, I saw a goddamn pig in that house. <laughs> it seemed like she was in charge of everything. They're not wrong. <laughs> that's, that's, they're like, this pig had humans and a dog as a pet. <laughs> a whole family of humans. Yeah. In the comments section to the Yosemite video, a user named Trucker247 recognized the Nightcrawler and shared their experience. I saw one in the Utah desert late at night while driving an 18-wheeler. The encounter lasted about five minutes. It appeared to be chasing me, but it reminded me of a deer trying to get away and thought it could outrun me. I believe it was from another world. Trucker247 needs a, uh, a show. 
Yeah, like full a, on YouTube channel. Like East Coast, um, yeah. uh, what is it called? FM? Coast, uh, to Coast. Coast to Coast AM. He needs his own show where we just hear stories from the road like this. Honestly, a trucker podcast where it's stories like this would listen. Oh, yeah, for sure. Even if it's just wacky stuff you see at a truck stop, I would listen to that. Mm-hmm. But especially if it was like, I saw some crazy shit driving along at night. And like, we've gotten some freaky Fridays of people that are not professional drivers who are seeing things at night. So the statistics of being on the road at night, I'm sure professional drivers see way more than the average bear. So you see, freaky Friday. <laughs> you definitely see fucked up stuff. I'm sure you've picked up hitchhikers and have some crazy stories from that. I don't know any truckers, but if you're a trucker out there, just know that y'all should get together and and start a podcast because we want to hear your stories. Or in the meantime, just send them into our Freaky Friday. And is it one of our Patreons? Frank is a trucker, and we (gasps) that's right. Okay, so I do know input trucker trucker input. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, Frank. So that's uh, please send more stories if you have any. Yes. A 17 year old motorist driving through Manchester, Indiana claims to have seen a nightcrawler late one evening on the side of the road. While it mostly resembled the Fresno creature's description, there was one notable difference. The unexplained Indiana being was over six feet tall. A second car with two passengers drove by and also saw the creature. All three motorists agreed that what they saw was not human, according to Ranker. Well, maybe these are the the parents and the other ones are the babies. Or <laughs> what year is this? Is uh twenty? 20- I couldn't find the year for the Indiana one, but um, you know, it's probably in around twenty seventeen, twenty fifteen. Uh, and you know, a couple years later, maybe they just got taller. Yeah, I mean, we all do. We grow. So in twenty seventeen, the nightcrawler appeared to go international when an alleged sighting from Poland was reported. The person who supposedly spotted the mysterious white legs had no photo or video proof, leading most to ignore the claim. Well, by 2017, it's been around 10 years, it's probably gotten wise to spotting a red glowing light. Mm. So what better way to remain under the radar than you go to Poland and just keep your eyes peeled for any CCTV security cameras and you can just walk freely and everybody will just be brushed off and then you can walk around as much as you want. They're like... Not again. Please get out of my yard. It's like, what are you going to do about it? No one's going to believe you. I believe there's uh, a lot of snow in Poland during the winters, if mm-hmm. I'm not mistaken. If you're from Poland, I could be wrong. But, you know, I would go, if I was one of these, to a snowy area because I feel like I would be, I would just blend right into the countryside. For sure, yeah, because they're hanging out in California and Yosemite with a lot of trees and mm-hmm. greenery, white against green. That's going to go. That's. Yeah, this is brilliant. Go to Colorado. Go yeah. to uh, even New Mexico. The white sands, the dunes. You know, you don't. If That's you don't want the cold, you still want the hot. There's still places for you. They're just sliding down the dunes. <laughs> their little pairs of pants on their uh, inner tubes. I did that <laughs> when I, in middle school. We took a trip out there and went tubing down the dunes. It was fun. Tube the dunes with the night crawlers. <laughs> <laughs> on April fifteenth, twenty twenty, in Billings, Montana. A home surveillance system caught something around 9.45 p.m. The footage shows some trees to the left and a tank to the right. About 20 seconds into the video, something the same shape as the nightcrawler is seen over by the far right of the screen. At the same time, a sound similar to a pig snort or a growl can be heard over the sounds of passing cars. Where was Pedal on the night of April 25th, 2020? God! You know what? I can't recall. So I can't say she wasn't there. Perhaps she was in Billings, Montana. The owner of the land found a deer carcass the next day with an injury to its abdominal area. The landowner suggested that possibly indicated a mountain lion, though the shape in the video does not resemble that animal. The video and the deer attack could be unrelated. Yeah, I think it was just trying to make sense of what they saw or heard on the video versus what they found the next day and it could just be it doesn't it, it looks more like when we covered skinwalker ranch in utah that so the deer injury looks more yeah. closer to that uh but it also could just be you know a, a wild beast got a hold of it there in the forest oh i'm sure that that's not uncommon this i mean we'll get to it and so what do we think but to me this one looks like a person or an animal walks onto screen and and walks off i it 
it's hard, it's so quick it's hard to tell if it's a mountain lion but it does look like it could be some type of animal and the fact that there was a growl heard at the same time would lead me to believe that you know i mean you're on the you, there's all sorts of shit that if you ever watch on youtube or tiktok like what um cameras out in the people that live out just like out in the forest and stuff or they'll have um trail cams where like game walks by i don't know how you'd ever sleep again once you saw what goes on out there at night yeah once you know the ones that are like motion sensors mm-hmm. man or you yeah, just see be... bobcats or mountain lions walking right down like in your backyard we Not saw a bobcat the other day running a- away from white rock lake it you was did? i thought it it was the biggest thing I've ever seen. Wow. It made, I don't know what it was. It was huge. There's no way it was a house cat. No, I mean, I've seen on next door reports of a bobcat in the area, so it probably was a bobcat. It was so big. Yeah, they'll it was also a... eat your pets. So probably my chihuahua. Inside. <laughs> mm-hmm. chihuahua was so little. Although, I feel like the goose could take most oh. things down. I was going to say, I think anything that goes towards her, she's so ornery. They're like, it's not worth it's it. I'm going to go yeah. find something that's less of a there's fight. A little, there's very little meat on this to make it <laughs> worth it. That's true. She's got little chicken wings for legs. <laughs> Sinister Hood will be right back. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. Life can be overwhelming, and many people are burned out without even knowing it. Symptoms can include lack of motivation, feeling helpless or trapped, detachment, fatigue, and more. I told you I was feeling straight up fatigued. My eye was twitching. I was like, I can't, I felt like I was laid up on the mattress. And I think that you go, I'm stressed out. This is burnout. I've like done too much. I'm tired. Yeah. You got to take care of yourself. We associate burnout with work, but that's not the only cause. Any of our roles in life can lead us to feel burned out. And BetterHelp Online Therapy wants to remind you to prioritize yourself. Talking with someone can help you figure out what's causing stress in your life. I have a BetterHelp therapist. I get text messages while I'm on the road. I can have sessions anywhere I want because it can be through the BetterHelp app via phone so I don't have to see anyone. Um, And that's very convenient for me because she's not even located in my city, though she is in Texas. So it's good to have a choose. Yeah, I could choose whatever uh, provider I want Mm -hmm. through this portal. Super accessible. BetterHelp is customized online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist. So you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy, and you can be matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. Sinister listeners get 10% off their first month at BetterHelp.com slash Sinister. That's BetterHelp.com slash Sinister. One of the most prevalent theories as to what the Fresno Nightcrawler could be is much like the popular online meme, aliens. The Nightcrawlers tend to walk a bit like an insect, making its appearance unsettling. This has led some believers to speculate the creatures are not of this world. If they are aliens, they appear to be harmless. No human has ever encountered one in person, and the Nightcrawlers have never caused any damage to property. My favorite was folks online who believe it was an alien said... It's clearly an alien from a swamp planet because that's why its legs are so long and it's all legs and mm-hmm. just its head would need to be up over. I didn't know that existed. You know, I new. didn't either. Uh, from an evolution standpoint, it stands to reason if you're on a swamp planet, eventually that's what your body would look like so you could survive. You might as well just be shaped like a pair of waders. Oh, yes. I was in my head at first. I was thinking... Waiters is in a restaurant, and I wasn't sure what you meant. And then I realized waiters that you wear. Yes. With a D. Mm -hmm. While the theory has been floated online that these creatures may be linked to ancient Native American folklore, there haven't been any concrete references to specific stories or lore. Some online users have mentioned the legend of stick Indians, but that refers to a separate and distinct piece of folklore that does not involve independently walking pants. I think folks were trying to uh, connect that kind of after the fact. It wasn't like there was lore that then this initial sighting in 2007 looked like. It's We see this sighting in 2007, and they try to retroactively fit it in. And I think this came about because there's a series of photographs of mm-hmm. these wooden sculptures, but no one knows when they were carved, where or they're at. even where they like are exactly. These photos crop up, but... For whatever reason, nobody knows where they came from. They were kind of passed to somebody in Florida from someone in New York. So it's, I mean, they are actual photos because you can see them, but Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it, 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 that in and of itself has become kind of this internet lore. Mm -hmm. 
Some who have seen the videos tend to believe the whole thing is a hoax. The initial video's quality is quite low. Jose filmed the video monitor with his handheld camcorder. Since then, the video has been copied time and time again to leave the footage grainy. This, some skeptics argue, is one way to hide any wires or attempts to fabricate the footage. Yeah, I believe he couldn't play it back because it would record over itself. So he plays it. I've sent you screen. I've se- I've taken pictures of our computer with my phone to send to you because I'm like, this is just easier than doing a screenshot. So he did that. But then, you know, it's been played at conferences and things where it's had to be compressed even more or then it's played like on another video and it's recorded from something else so at this point it's been like recorded and replayed so many times that it's it's very grainy yeah it's been recorded from a recording to another recording that someone then records that recording Mm -hmm. someone did i think it was a youtube video and someone had plotted out and it was like six or eight different uh, transformations it's gone through. And essentially, I mean, it's still the same footage, but just the quality is just worse and worse and mm-hmm. worse each time. Um, I even believe the that very- was Dr. Disillusion, who is one of my now favorite YouTubers that I've stumbled <laughs> across. Uh, that's the great part of episodes like this. I'm like, there's a whole corner of the internet I didn't know uh-huh. about, and I'm very excited to be here now. Um, and also, even in the very initial news report from Univision, it's like hit the the news camera is over his shoulder while he's holding the camcorder and it's playing on his camcorder. So even what you're seeing on the TV, even in those early days was like video of a video of a Mm -hmm. video. So it was very hard to, to really get down in there. Mm -hmm. However, others have enhanced the footage down to a granular level. This shows that the pants shaped figure is moving without any strings attached to them. Evidence like this has catapulted the Fresno Nightcrawler from a possible hoax to a full-fledged online cultural phenomenon. This was interesting because the this YouTuber took it basically all layers away to where it was almost looks like 3D, and you really do just mm-hmm. see the outline of whatever's walking in that whatever that figure is. There's not anything attached to the top or the sides of it. Yeah, but that like with all of these, we're, there it's just another person making a video. True. So if you're trying to prove it or disprove it, you're still making a video. So who knows, like, how believable any of it is. YouTuber Dr. Disillusion was quick to point out how easy it was for him to recreate the illusion of a nightcrawler using a few camera and editing tricks. Holding a watermelon below his chest, the doctor awkwardly walked across his yard, filming the experiment with a stationary camera. The doctor was then able to digitally remove the top half of his body, leaving only the melon, which looks like a head, and his legs. If one were to drape the melon with a sheet or clothe it in pants, it stands to reason it wouldn't be difficult to pull off a similar look of the Fresno and Yosemite footage. This was very interesting from just a editing standpoint, because he showed how he uh, digitally removed, like, basically just photoshopped the top half of his body out of this this footage and he played it uh like a side by side shot of the Fresno footage and then his footage his footage was even more alarming because it looked like these creepy little legs with this melon head but i mean you know and he was specifically walking awkwardly and it did look like you could if you knew how to do those types of things it could be something you could recreate and that's the key. It's hard. Like Paris is able to do. I mean, it makes it look like Tommy zaps up in a beam, mm-hmm. or like you know the the he put our friend's face in a hologram on a wall and stuff when it was literally just a blank wall. So if you have that, mm-hmm. but that's also in 2022. The investigators on the TV show Fact or Faked attempted to recreate the Fresno footage to no avail, leaving some to believe this proved the video could not be a hoax. However, according to Paranorms, the TV show has been widely criticized for poorly investigating the videos on their show, and in some cases, even modifying footage. Well, it's also the History Channel, right? Uh, <laughs> I know it's Sci-Fi, sci-fi Channel. Fi it's network, all the same kind of, yeah. Which uh, basically really just... should be the History Channel at this point. <laughs> it is disturbing to think that they would have modified any, you know, if that's part of their, I would say, like, their integrity is... I don't get the impression they are there to um, be as serious as as one could be in trying to prove or disprove something. It's, I mean, 
it seems like a very staged show, in my opinion. Kind of like a trying to think of the well, I mean, any of the number of recent ones we've watched for like we're gonna hunt this treasure. <laughs> Where yeah. on the surface you travel to the place, maybe you talk to some people, but I think the outcome is not the. Uh, it's still that you know, right? You want to like leave it open to interpretation. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, they're it's a TV show, so they're trying to do stuff to get people to watch it. It's not as interesting if it's all just. Oh, yeah, this was just somebody um, pulling a prank. You know, you want to leave it up to the viewer's imagination. Still, there are those that believe the hoax may be nothing more than the pranksters in costumes, possibly walking in high heels or stilts to create the awkward gait. Theories of walking birds, small deer standing upright, and even an undiscovered species of primate have also been suggested. Perhaps it's the nightcrawler's hilarious shape. Perhaps it is the cryptid's simple and mischievous nature. Whatever the reason, the Fresno Nightcrawler has taken a position in the online community of cryptid lovers. A quick search of Etsy shows patches, stickers, t-shirts, keychains, and prints, all bearing the pants-like shape of the little creepy. Image after image show the California legend chilling in a pool donut, doing the splits, dancing, and in a cryptid lineup alongside the greats like Mothman, Nessie, and the Jersey Devil. Well, he's earned his place, I guess, amongst the <laughs> oh. cryptid greats. When I was searching this, I noticed a lot of people were responding with, this is my favorite cryptid. I love this cryptid. And I thought it was an interesting, the amount of enthusiasm that I'd I I'd never heard saw. of it. I think I'd heard of it, but I wasn't like, I didn't know what it looked like. Mm-hmm. I was. I've, I feel like I've seen a screenshot of the the initial footage, mm. but I hadn't really looked into like, the until we met the little plushie in person in mm-hmm. Boston. Yeah, it, it kind of looks timing. like a tooth. In fact, I sa- think I said, is that a tooth? And Kirsten said, it's the Fresno Nightcrawler. And I said, oh, okay. It does look like a tooth. It does kind of look like a tooth, though. Yeah. Well, so what do we think? I've solved it. I've solved the whole thing. Oh, yeah? What's up? Okay. So I think the initial footage I don't think was digitally manipulated because I'd, the technology and the... There was no reason for them to do it, right? They weren't, like, trying to get famous. They weren't. I think that was really a family. Someone on Reddit lives in Fresno. There is apparently a family in Fresno where the dad is kind of a whimsical guy and, like, told everyone he invented surfboards. and But, like, would, like, make up these, like, obviously fake stories. And in the recent months, like, in the past 12 months, his son responded when someone posted, hey, does anybody know about this Nightcrawler? The son of the whimsical guy responded and said, that was totally us. Like, we, I take responsibility. We did that prank. And then later deleted the, deleted the comment and said, well, I can't comment, you know, I have to go dark if you know, you know. And so a lot of folks were like, is that a whimsical family of lying people who are just, it's yet another lie mm. or is it what did he feel bad and he's like man this really got out of hand that was 2007 and people are still talking about this this many years later because i think those initial ones someone mentioned if it was like a smaller person in some sort of parachute pant situation and you you know girded the top up around your head and kept your arms to your side and kind of walked like. funky yeah that's what it looks like so i think those initial ones and then the family being truly freaked out and the the man like he doesn't want to leave his house for two weeks he didn't want his face shown you're like what the fuck is this that walked across my lawn you may feel bad if you're the neighbor kid who jacked with his family and you're like hey, 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 i'm gonna freak him out and then you really you freaked him out so bad that it's like on the news you're like oh shit i don't want to say anything and then the other ones i think you could digitally manipulate fairly easily you know mm-hmm. on but i think the first ones i don't think they were like puppets there's someone on reddit i told you i found these like very intricate like puppeteering drawings where they're like there would be weights in the feet then you would use wire and you would do this like you would see all that i think in the background of it unless it was a combination of practical effects and cg but i think the initial one was like literally i tend to i think the locals were like oh that family that sounds like they would do that like it wasn't like no surely not it was like you fucking would really <laughs> and so if you met i'm telling you if you like pulled a prank on your neighbor and you're like that's eh, fine like nobody's awake i'm just gonna go run through the neighborhood dressed like this and suddenly it's like we're being infested with aliens and this paranormal guy and this mufon person and all these you mm-hmm. know i think and then for the other ones a lot of this i think it could be yet another case of like Either a deer standing up or our our favorite is the sandhill crane. <laughs> <You> <laughs> the sandhill like crane freaky. can't catch a break. No. 
I uh, I agree. I think they all look to me like someone in a costume, either with um, like it's almost like um, at Party City or something. Those like Slender Man costumes almost where it's like that spandex or lycra that you can like pull up over your whole body. You know, mm-hmm. it kind of looks like that. Um, Morph suits. Yeah, suits because they do look like there's fabric flowing in the breeze like pants or a cape or something especially the yosemite one i laughed out loud because that straight up just looks like two people trying to walk in heels with these costumes on like down a path and everything and if you knew that there were cameras there like Mm -hmm. you might just decide you're gonna fuck with i mean i don't know i was a teenager that's something i could have seen myself doing 100 percent. so yeah they all kind of seem like um either somebody intentionally pulling a prank or a animal that was misidentified because it's hard to tell on those nighttime uh, recordings, especially when it's real grainy and stuff and it's just a pop in and a pop out on the side of the screen. Exactly what you're looking like. If you want it to look like a Fresno night crawler, I think you can, you know, your brain can say that if you want it to look like a mountain lion, it can also look like a mountain lion. Yeah. It's what it, what it, Paradoil, par- I can't think of the word. Per- oh, paradoil. Yeah, when you see yeah. like faces in rocks and stuff like that. You like make the shape with your brain. But I mean, like to your point, teenagers, when we were teenagers, my friends for no reason showed up at my mom's house dressed in children's Batman and Darth Vader costumes and just started like fighting each other in the yard. Like teenage, yeah, we do teenagers are stuff. just goofy. Mm-hmm. And to be like, oh, look at those pants. Oh, those were my dad's pants from the 80s. They're so baggy. Let me see. And then mm-hmm. you, pull, you can pull it up over your head. You're like, let's go walk around in these. Mm-hmm. You know, it could easily, I think, be something that's silly. Whether it's the person that made that Facebook comic, they could be full of shit. But I think that's a lot more likely is that they're jacking around in the, the street. And then you're like, oh, shit, we got caught on TV. They called the cops on us. They Now it's on the news that it's like, don't say anything because it's gone way beyond us. <laughs> you know, not that you'd get in trouble, but also I think, too, if you're like, I created that. Yeah. You know, you're you got away with it that nobody knows it was you that you'd be like you're kind of like people are still talking oh, about it. I gave the the cryptid community something to to fall in love with. So good for me. It's also just a very cute character and all I was like, what, how many of these stickers can I buy? All the merch was like so cute. There was one I sent it to you where it's in a little donut. It's like chilling in a pool mm-hmm. donut. I don't understand how the little cup in the side it's going to grab mm-hmm. a hold of that. I told you it goes arms. up its butt. Because what I don't, cheeks. what I don't get is why does everyone want to sexualize cryptids? Because they're sexy. Baby. Maybe they don't want that. You know, <laughs> that's true. Don't. I found maybe it. we shouldn't. Their bodies are their bodies. Maybe we should give them some autonomy and not just sexualize them when they just want to be taken seriously as cryptids. And I saw someone, to your point, I saw a cryptid zine that someone makes on Etsy, and I'll actually probably order it because it was very cute. But it said, realize that cryptids have autonomy, and you should ask before you take a photo. (laughs) Exactly. Yes. And maybe that's Uh, why we don't have any footage of a lot of them is because somebody said, hey, can I? And they said, no, I'd rather you not. I don't look my best today. I'm not feeling great. So (laughs) I don't do photos. And they respected that. Yeah. I did see someone 3D printed a Fresno Nightcrawler. Which was amazing. They designed the 3D print. It was great. You turn it around. That thing has got booty That's cheeks. That's what I'm talking about. Juicy ass. They all, everybody wants to put a big old badonkadonk on Mothman, <laughs> Jersey Devil. Every I mean, there's that whole series where it's just cryptids that have huge asses. Mm-hmm. I think that's why I love the whole cryptid community, and I love how it's all of these cryptids have kind of been taken on by kind of internet culture and meme culture of, because you can't say that Mothman doesn't have a juicy ass, you know, like who's to say he does or doesn't. No, it just, for me personally, it makes me uncomfortable. (laughs) (laughs) But I think that's the great part. It's bizarre looking. Yeah. You're like, Oh, the Fresno nightcrawler loves to wear thigh high fishnets and high heels, which we saw several Mm -hmm. independent artists independently drew the Fresno nightcrawler in fishnet thigh highs and high heels. And, Who's to say we're not? We can't see that footage is too grainy. We can't tell if there's the eyes on it, that's or true. if it took them off to go run through the yard. So that's kind of the magic of the cryptids is that you you take they take on a life of their own that you can't really even if it was created by some goofy teenagers in Fresno or whoever it was created by it kind of gets out of your hands and you can no longer control it anymore. Yeah, I think I think it went from 
pants to sex uh, <laughs> over the course of a few years. Pants to no pants. Pants to no pants, exactly. Pants to fishnets, yep. Well, if you want to bring us a little cryptid stuffy that we can sign, much like we did for Kirsten with her Fresno Nightcrawler, you can come to one of our live shows. We've got several left. We are heading to Chicago and Milwaukee next week, and then Florida a few weeks after that. It's going to be so fun. Chicago 29th and 30th. We're going to be at Zany's in Chicago. It's, first of all, a great club, great neighborhood, great city that we love so much, and uh, both have spent significant amounts of time there. And we have two amazing Chicago legends that we're thrilled to bring you two different shows on two different nights. So if you already have a ticket to one night, just get a ticket to the second mm-hmm. night. You get a whole different subject and a whole different set of Judge Christie questions because True. it obviously changes based on the audience. So we hope to see you at both of those. And then on Friday, July 1st, we'll be in Milwaukee. Also a wonderful city. I have I went there on vacation a few years back when I lived in Chicago, and I've been dying to go back. So I'm stoked to go back. Never been. I'm we- excited to go. Oh, it's a lovely city, and uh, there's a Fonzie statue we got to find. All right, <laughs> and uh, we're that. gonna we can visit the thing that we're gonna be talking about in Milwaukee, I which think we got we're from staying at the thing we're gonna be talking about, oh, aren't we? Well, well, TBD, TBD, I think TBD. it's up to us. <laughs> it's, I think so. Um, and also, uh, shout out to Judy from Milwaukee, who when we told her <laughs> a couple ideas we have, she was like, "Those are no good. You got to do this one." Judy and I was from like, Milwaukee that we met at the Wild Tootsies. Orchid. Was that what that? It was Tootsie's Wild Orchid. Tootsie's yeah, in Wild Nashville. Orchid in Nashville across from the Ryman Auditorium. Yep. And after I ordered the Bushwhacker, she goes, what is that? And I said, it's basically frozen Kahlua. And she's kind of like, hmm. And then I was over there talking to you. And I look over and her husband's got her one and hands it, it to was her. And good. I was like, this is Judy, how you doing? So shout out to a Milwaukee native Judy who was like, you got to do this subject. It's going to be great. So we're excited about that one as well. And then Tampa and Orlando after that. And we got another two Florida specific topics. Mm-hmm. And then we'll be done. So you only have five more chances to see us live until uh, who knows when. So get it while you come can. on down. Sinisterhood.com slash live shows. We love providing Sinisterhood to you at no cost. So if you like what you hear, consider supporting the show by donating to our Patreon. We're a small operation creating the show for you by researching, writing, recording, and producing it ourselves. Any amount is sincerely appreciated and helps offset the cost of making and hosting the show. As a thank you, you'll also get some sweet perks like ad-free episodes, a Sinisterhood sticker, membership to our exclusive Patreon Facebook group for those in the Ruling the Airways and Getting Into It tier, a special shout-out on the show, a monthly bonus mini-sode, this month is an update on Murdoch, Alec Murdoch and what's going on in South Carolina, and patron-exclusive video and audio content, including Emma the Asshole, Relationship Advice, Judge Christie, Dear Sinister, True Crime Headlines, and more. We also uploaded the full footage from the Cleveland show on the Ohio State Reformatory in full HD and also various angles. It's beautiful footage, and that comes along with your Patreon subscription. Patrons in the Getting Into It tier are also able to vote on a bonus content segment each month that they would like to see live-streamed. This month, it's uh, June 23rd at 8 p.m. Central, and we're going to be doing Off My Chest, which is a Ooh. subreddit that was suggested to us by a Patreon, and we just did a uh, studio version of that. Which will come out and, this week as well. And you'll hear that. So you'll hear Off My Chest this week, and then you'll also hear us performing, or come see us perform it live June 23rd at 8 p.m. Central. You also have the fun perk of access to our Discord server, where you can connect with other fans in real time and discuss the latest in true crime, share personal ghost stories, or just post adorable pictures of your pets. We hop on occasionally, and we host monthly Q&As on Crowdcast, where you can ask us all your burning questions. And this month is the 22nd, also at 8 p.m. Central Time. For patrons not in the U.S., you have the option to pay in pounds or euros, saving you the cost of the conversion fee. Annual memberships for all tiers are also now available. Those that select this option will be rewarded with a free month of membership. For more details on all of this and specific member tiers, visit Sinisterhood.com and click Patreon on the top banner. And make sure you stick around after our sign-offs to hear your shout-out and our thank you corner. So many of you have been tagging us in pictures of you sporting your sweet Sinisterhood merch. Keep those pictures coming. And if you want some cool Sinisterhood swag like t-shirts, mugs, totes, and even clothes for your kiddos, visit Sinisterhood.com and click on Shop in the top banner. The best thing you can do to help us grow is like, review, and follow on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to your podcasts. And please tell a friend who you think would like us to check us out. 
or you can bring them to a show. We've had so many people bring people that have never listened to us before to the show, and then we meet them in the meet and greet, and they leave a listener, and it's so very fun. It means so much to us, and it really helps podcasts like us get more exposure. You can also share episodes by clicking three dots in the top corner or share our Spotify playlist by going to SinisterHood.com slash playlist. So if you have a friend who's like, I don't really like true crime stuff, but I really love a cryptid. Let me tell you, Fresno Nightcrawler and more all at SinisterHood.com slash playlist. You can also follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Sinisterhood Pod and like us on Facebook at Sinisterhood. We're also on YouTube and TikTok. Christy, where are you out on the computer? I am on TikTok and Twitter at Christy or GTFO. And I am on Instagram at Christy M. Wallace. Heather? I'm on Twitter at MCK versus the world, and I'm on TikTok and Instagram at Heather versus the world. As always, the devil rules the airwaves. Keep it creepy. Hey, everybody. Thank you so much for supporting the show on Patreon. Here are your special Patreon shout outs. Bryn Victoria. Oliver Henderson. Kelly G. Emily. Melissa Peck. Emily Sicklesteel, Townsend Kraut, Chelsea L, Lindsay S, Kelly Giles, Sarah Tokars, Angela Henry, Megan Hopkins, Terry Davis Nunn, Jennifer Scobie, Madeline Lane, Rocket Sloth, Vicki Serrano, Brooke, Haley, Rebecca Caswell, Darcy Waddell, Leanna Delaney, Kathleen Hale, Caitlin Wortman, Jezebel, Emily Lucht, Jennifer Gokel, Samantha, Sarah Bright, Amber Delaney, Mandy Ranieri, Danielle Wright, Carrie Hutto, Jennifer Robbins, Bella Anguino, Macy Sprague, Nadia Ulana, Midori Longo, Anita, Ashley Bussell, Sarah Malloy, Kate Blake, Cassie Amberger, Shelby, Kylie Manson, Aaron Potter, Kimberly, Kayla A, Brianna Klimt, Olivia Brown, Claudia Marquez, Melanie, Roxy Loon, Lori Mason, Jenny Sparenberger, Lauren Sakoff, Michaela Margison, Stephanie. Thank you all so much for supporting the show. We couldn't do this without you. We sincerely appreciate it. And now, our thank you corner. I had my eyes shut and was like, I will remember every single thing, but I know with my ADHD, I might not have. So we thank everyone for being at the show mm-hmm. and for bringing us stuff when you don't have to. As Christy says, your presence is a present. It is. But we have some very generous souls who have brought us some things and we want to shout y'all out. And if we missed anybody, please let us know because we did our best to write down things as we were receiving them. We have a system going forward, so we don't leave anybody out. But if we did forget to include you, please let us know because we do want to give you a proper shout out on the show. For those that we did write down, well, we started off strong in Columbus because Mm -hmm. that is where... Samantha Schutz and Jordan Seiler gave us baby, and baby they, has been with us every show since. They delivered baby into our world, and we thank you. <laughs> thank them for that very much. Yes. Uh, and at the Detroit show, Sin created a um, rift in the podcast because yes. of the fidget slug. <laughs> <laughs> so very cool ghost hat, which we've both worn now and looks very great on both of yes. us. Thank you so much for that, and thank you so much for the sloth tumbler, as well as my yes, no, like divination coin. Um, but game changer with the fidget the slug. Fidget thank slug you. has come with us many times. I will, Tommy has now bought me a. Oh, it's not a foot long, but it's longer than six inches. It might be like <laughs> eight or ten eight. inches. This giant rainbow fidget slug. Ella and Simon love it. So we got a lot of fidget slugs all around now. We also got from Amber McLean a very pretty necklace that had layered crystals representing different things and a little printout of what they all meant and a tarot card that she pulled for each of us that day to kind of um, show us maybe what our path was for for that day, which was very nice. So it's very thoughtful. Thank you so much, Amber and Sin. In Raleigh, we had our cup runneth over in Raleigh. Gosh, yes. Abby, Cortland, and Ronan came through with a, I got a Peony Jasper Tower. Mm-hmm, very which pretty. Which I loved. I got the, I think it's pronounced 
selenite or selenite. It was a um, cloud crystal. It's so very pretty. And then they were so sweet and gave Ella and Simon their own crystals too. Ella loves her little, it's like this tiny little uh, spell jar on a, it's a necklace to ward off bad dreams. She was so very thrilled to get it. And Simon got a Unikite star that's from North Carolina. So they're both in their rooms. And uh, it's always so sweet when you guys think of my kiddos. And they love it so much. So thank you so much, Abby, Cortland, and Ronan. And we got to uh, bump into Katie Mozleski before the show, which she's been a listener since almost day one Mm -hmm. in a Patreon, and we interact all the time, and then gave us a very sweet card, which just talked about some personal things we discussed, and we always love that, because I love whenever we're at the show and someone will be like, I emailed you X, and you're like, oh, I remember that, Mm -hmm. absolutely. Or they'll be like, I DM'd you this, and I'm like, "Mm -hmm, no, we talked about that. We share screenshots. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, we remember. So thank you for that, Katie. Thank you, Katie. Very sweet. Jesse and Emily... Whoa, was this tote bag full of goodies. It we they were such full tote bags. We thought they were their tote bags and then they handed us tote bags and yours had a very cool skull on it. Yes. And I use that all the time by the way. That's my new traveling bag. It's, yes, it's such a good size. Uh, mine had a great RBG quote on it and they were both full of so man- many goodies again. A cryptid shirt for Ella, a book for Ellen Simon, a Mothman ABC. Then I got a Mothman uh canvas pouch which I've been keeping on a bunch of stuff in it. Y'all, we love a good pouch and things we can put things in to take mm-hmm. with us on the road, so it's always extremely convenient. They're also a lot of other goodies, stickers, Diet Cokes, uh, mm-hmm. a bunch of very cute stuff in there. So thank you so much. Also, uh, Eva and Melissa, the bankers, they said, just straight up gave us cold hard cash yeah. for airport drinks. And you know what? We appreciated that. They were oh, delicious. Yeah. Thank you. And their card said, we aren't good at arts and crafts, but we're bankers. So here's some money. And who doesn't love cash? No one's going to turn it down. No. We sure didn't. Um, And thanks to Jennifer for my gluten-free treats. I got cookies, all kinds of stuff, and I've been, uh, may have finished off everything. Oh, you shared some with me. They were very good. Yeah, the red velvet cookies, and we had s'mores Mm -hmm. cookies. They were all so good. Thank you. And to settle the fidget slug uh, debacle, Mm -hmm. Becky and Matt... 3D printed crystal octopuses, which, if you're wondering what that is, it's a Dwayne the Rock Johnson head with octopus tentals, tentacles, and it's crystal clear. Yes. It's amazing. It's currently sitting right in front of me on the desk. Uh, yes, we took pictures with it, and it was they were very fun. Also very fun, Sabrina and Matt gave us the little red bat plushies that now sit on the stage with Baby. They flank Baby. It's Baby and the Girls is what we call it. Yep. Uh, they're very cute. They ha- mine has little um, skull fabric on its wings, and yours had little blood droplets. So super cute, perfect little trio of best friends. Speaking of best friends, Dallas and Austin, thank you all for coming out and having us meet you. Because again, it's like we've interacted so much mm-hmm. online. Dallas taught me how to use my inhaler when I first got it, and I was doing it wrong a few years ago. So thank you, Dallas. <laughs> and they gave us some really cool Golden Girls yes. magnets, which we both love that. The Golden Girls and uh, decorating things as well. So thank you very much. Yes, and thank you, Jenna Bauer. We each got a different wooden rune to hang by the door that is um, to ward off bad energy and just create positivity in the house. And I love stuff like that. So got ours hanging up. I know you do, you do as well. So thank mm-hmm. you so much. Right by the door. Nashville. Man, what a time this was. My gosh. Huge shout out to Christina Guy for the tour of Third Man Records. I have been trying to explain to Tommy how cool it was, and words don't do it justice, and we weren't allowed to take pictures. So we're just going to have to go back, and hopefully Christina will give us another tour with Tommy, and hopefully Paris can be there that time too, because it was very dope. I was like trying to find a commercial for Apple that they shot there like five years ago and look over people's shoulders to try to <laughs> screenshot to ex- because I was trying to explain it to Paris. It's an incredible place mm-hmm. and Christina is an incredible person and extremely generous. So thank you for your time and uh, and all for, the little goodies you gave us too. Yes, thank you so so much. Also, we had a visit from fidget spinner influencer Sierra Zagari <laughs> who uh, brought us all kinds of fidget toys. Sierra was incredibly generous with. Giving us little pop through things, poppers, spinners, I got a every kind of thing. I got, you can't see what I'm doing, but it's this green one. This is my favorite one. It's oh, a yeah. squishy ball and you squeeze it and it just, oh, feels so satisfying. And look at that stuff coming out. Yeah. I have the little circle that's almost like a waffle and it's it's kind of like you would pop plastic oh, wrap. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Oh, I love that. I just sit there. Doo, 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 oh, it's turn so around, satisfying. Doo, 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 doo. So it's amazing. Thank you, Sierra, for making the trek and for uh, bringing us those awesome toys. And give her a follow on TikTok if you're into fidget, fidget toys because she's got the market on what all is coming out, quality, how good things are, bad things are. Mm-hmm. So if you need fidget toy reviews, she's your gal. We've talked about Kirsten. We signed the uh, Fresno Nightcrawler stuffy. But they also gave us cryptid coins, which was so very sweet. And that, now I have two cryptid coins. I know. Gotta I started a collection. I put it in my dress pocket and I folded my dress up and put it in my my suitcase. And as we were driving to New York, I clutched Leanne on the side. I go, Where's my cryptid coin? And she goes, <laughs> I don't, I think it's in your pocket. And as soon as we got to New York, I pulled it out and put it in my wallet immediately because I was like, I can't lose it. And so now it stays it. in my wallet. So thank you, Kirsten. Jordan has, knows my love language. I, have been now started doing video reviews of the Bloody Marys I have (laughs) on tour, which uh, we'll do something with, probably put it on Patreon. But Jordan gave me my own travel Bloody Mary stuff, complete with little pickles, olives, uh, Tito's, and uh, tomato, TNT's, uh, tomato juice, the mix, and all sorts of stuff. It was so very sweet. So thank you so much. And I got a. I don't drink Bloody Marys, but I do drink Tito's. So I got two bottles of Tito's, nice. and then just a bunch of different gluten free snacks. Which, as we were traveling between Philly and New Jersey to visit Paris's grandma, I was like, "I am starving." And Paris was like, "You have all those amazing snacks." Blamo had my snacks. There so you thank go. you, Jordan. Also, we got some awesome earrings from Aaron and Connor of Roses for Thorns. Very and very they're, nice. Uh, that's. I love a good business that makes beautiful, high quality things and then also donates the proceeds to uh, worthy causes. So thank you for those. Yes. And thank you, Cass, for the Pride Ghost painting. I have it sitting right beside me right now. It says, Keep it creepy. Uh, Keep it creepy, Boston, Mass, and then the date. So I love that we can commemorate that show with something um, during Pride Month. So thank you so much. And we also got some reveal rings for us and some for Ella. And I have one of them I'm going to give to Sydney and Lila as well from Lauren. Thank you for that. They're the, all the rage on TikTok, I hear. You put, they're like, they look like bath bombs, but they're not. She assured us, do not put these in the bath, no matter what TikTok tells you. But inside, there's a ring, and you put them in water, and they fizz away. And then it's a big surprise as what's inside, which is super fun. So thank you for those. And Jocelyn of Soul Shine and Moonbeams sent us... Florida water previously, mm-hmm. but has made a new concoction of Florida water with tequila and lime, and it's very margarita and it smells amazing, and it's a great uh, you use Florida water, you know, cleanse your hands before meditation or tarot pulls and stuff. So we definitely appreciate that, and uh, I snuck it on the plane in my bag of toiletries. Thank nice. you. Nice. Nice. Thank you, TSA. Also, from Christy, spelled the same way. I rarely meet people that spell my name the same way, so that was very fun, but got a lot of great goodies from her. A cryptid book, a cryptid poster, a children's book, candy, card. So thank you so much. Again, when you guys think of the kids, it's so very sweet and they love it. So Ella was very excited about this cryptid poster. That's amazing. Yes. Well, thank you all to everyone that supports the show in any type of way. We love you guys so much. It means so much to us when you just coming to the show means so much to us. And then when you stand in line to actually meet us and have something You'd never have to do that, but it's always so appreciated. So thank you so much. We hope to see you again soon. Stay safe, stay healthy, and keep it creepy. Wahahaha.